Hey guys, Suze here. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner Keto Edition video. This week we're cooking up four new easy keto meals that you can use to lose weight and stay in ketosis. These are all low carb meals that are versions of favorites of my husband's. It was his birthday week, so we did make sure to cook things that he specially requested this week. Um, as well as one necessary recipe that I just kind of threw together to get rid of stuff out of the freezer. If you want to see how we did it and what we did, then make sure you stick around. And also, check and make sure you're subscribed to our channel with the notification bell on so you don't miss these weekly keto what's for dinner videos. I wanna catch the rain. So getting started, I made this around steak stir fry with broccoli, peppers, and onions. Just a little Parmesan cheese thrown on top. I made this because I needed to get rid of this. You can see there's a little place that's a little freezer bunt there. So I just went ahead and trimmed that out. Quick tip for you guys, I like to cut steak and pretty much any other meat when it is not thawed all the way. If you want to go ahead and slice it when it's just a little partially frozen, then it's crisp and it'll cut a whole heck of a lot easier than it does if it's thawed out. So to start with, I threw some avocado oil in a pretty nice size skillet over medium to medium high heat. Added in a whole heap of minced garlic and minced ginger. And you just wanna saute that for probably at least 30 seconds till it gets really fragrant. To that, I went ahead and added my meat and uh, went ahead and seared it a little on one side before shifting it around in there. And I just cooked it until it was nice and browned. Uh, I didn't like the looks of it, so I added some butter on top to give it some extra flavor flavor. Steak cooked in butter is so good. To that, I added this little bag of peppers and onions. This was some stuff uh, that kind of got a little questionably thawed after the hurricane. So it didn't thaw all the way, but it was stuff that I wanted to go ahead and cook. So that's why I'm kind of just throwing this recipe together off the top of my head. After those cooked down, uh, you can add some soy or some amino, coconut aminos, liquid aminos your sea salt and your pepper and then I just threw in a little bag of this organic broccoli from Costco it's one of our staples and put the lid on and steamed that until it was good to go this was delicious it was even better the second day after the flavors kind of settled in together and here you go all plated up like I said I just put some fresh shredded parm on it super super delicious Next was one of my husband's special requests. These are beef, uh, like taco taquitos. They were gonna be tacos, but we made them taquitos. So to start with, I took about a pound of ground beef and just chopped it up and browned it. And then I added my own um, taco seasoning to this. I actually had a little bit left over that was pre-made, but for you at home, you can use whatever your favorite taco seasoning is. I usually just do it by hand and I just throw in like Onion powder, garlic powder, spl uh, splash, <laughs> a bit of oregano, a bit of uh, paprika, and a ton, a ton, a ton of cumin, uh, a little bit of chili powder, maybe some red pepper flakes. You get the deal. So uh, after that was cooked, I preheated the oven to 375, and I measured out, I'm just, I'm using some Mexican style cheese for this, just because... Again, I want to use that up. I didn't want to shred new regular cheddar, but I'm measuring out a thirds each into little circles on these half sheets. And I'm going to put them in the oven at 375 for five minutes and then rotate the racks and cook them for another five minutes to make my shells. Now, I ordered these little taco shell stands from Amazon with the hopes that I could dry my cheese, cheeso cheese shells for keto on those. But, um, and, and I just ordered like the $8 set instead of the $20, like, here you go, this is the taco shell maker. Now I usually just do these over a wooden spoon on a wine rack, but I didn't feel like pulling that down after the fact. I was really kind of throwing this dinner together quickly. It's very simple dinner. So I said, what the hell, we'll make it taquitos instead and just roll these right on up. So I just put my little filling in there, uh, just like I would for tacos. 
I didn't use guacamole this time, I usually do, but just putting this little bit in did make it easier and I was able to just roll these right on up and then the cheese just kind of stuck to itself and they were absolutely delicious. I fixed myself three, but I was actually only able to eat two of these. My husband, on the other hand, housed them. There you go, I'll plate it up. Next up was my husband's favorite recipe of the week and a new recipe that I cooked that I actually found online um, by a woman named Jennifer Benz. And it is a keto meatloaf stuffed with cheese. It's made with chorizo and ground beef. So to start with, I preheated the oven to 350. You see all my ingredients assembled here. Just kind of prepped everything to make it easier to film. Put in my ground beef. Here you go. I've got about a pound of chorizo as well. Put that in. Used my meat chopper to just kind of chop those up together to incorporate them before I get my hands in there. To this, I added one egg. And then um, I added, this is about a quarter of a red onion that I chopped up. And I opted for a cup of almond flour. Now the recipe said you could use a half, half a cup of coconut flour instead, but I didn't. These are my dry um, seasoning, so it's a half a tablespoon garlic powder, a half a tablespoon onion powder, a half a tablespoon smoked paprika, half a teaspoon salt, and a half a teaspoon pepper. And once I got all of that good stuff in there, I went ahead and started incorporating it. I also added two minced garlic um, cloves to that. You wanna make sure you don't overwork the meat either when you're mixing it up, guys. So I'm just gonna take half of that mixture and I put it into the bottom of a loaf pan. And then I had cut up into chunks some sharp cheddar cheese that I just had in the refrigerator that I kinda needed to get rid of as well and uh, you kind of want to make sure there's about an inch clearance on each side so that the meat will seal around your cheese and it won't ooze out everywhere and I kind of stacked mine because I wanted you to be able to see it like I want to have a little bit of height on it when you cut into it and once I got that in there I just took the other half of the meat mixture and went ahead and started placing it gently just around the cheese. I filled in the edges first, just kind of form like a brace for the cheese and then put the, the final little bit on top. And once you have that all filled in and patted down, I just popped this in the oven, uh, like I said, at 350 and I cooked it for 45 minutes and it came out perfect, but you know, you might want to use a meat thermometer to double check, but 45 minutes was great for me. And here it is all plated up with just some steamed um, broccoli that I just made in the microwave and put a little bit of uh, rotisserie chicken seasoning on it. And I put a little bit of low carb salsa on the meatloaf. This was my husband's favorite, favorite meal of the week. And I will link it down below in the description box, of course. Next up this week was my favorite meal of the week. Look at this. This was so freaking good. It's keto shrimp cauliflower fried rice. I don't even like shrimp fried real rice as much as I liked this recipe. Um, I scarfed down an entire huge bowl of it as soon as I made it. So to start with, I took about a tablespoon of olive oil. I'm using a pretty large saucepan here just because I like to be able to mix my stuff easy and I don't want the grease from this bacon popping out all over me. Um, the recipe only calls for two ounces of bacon. I cooked more than that because I like bacon. And it only called for a half a pound of um, shrimp and I did put a pound in it because I also like shrimp. <laughs> but you fry your bacon. To that I added two eggs that I'd previously beaten and as soon as you add them to that hot uh, grease left over from the bacon. They're pretty much cooked. It was pretty cool looking as I did it. After I cooked those, I removed them with all of the grease that 
I cooked them in, I kind of let them absorb it and removed them to a dish. Added a little bit more olive oil and went ahead and added my shrimp. Like I said, I did almost a pound of shrimp instead of the recommended half pound. So, and this was a recipe from Keto Vale and I will link it down below. So, obviously I added my salt and pepper. I went ahead and put a lid on to get the steam to help these cook. And I cooked my shrimp for just like two minutes maybe three minutes because they were still kind of frozen. And then I stick those to the side, empty out my pot, more olive oil. To this, I added um, a tablespoon of minced ginger and about the same of garlic minced. And then I used four cups of frozen cauliflower rice. And just cooked that until it was all the way soft and mixed and fragrant and all that jazz. Then after you have that cooked pretty well, you can add everything back in. I just crumbled that bacon with my hands. It was so crisp. Added my shrimp back in without the juice. The eggs back in. And then I also chopped up about three scallions, like green onions. And added those in as well. And then you just mix, 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 and then you're gonna add your um, liquid aminos, or coconut aminos, or soy sauce. It called for a tablespoon and a half. I used two, and then just cooked it on down. This was so freaking delicious. Here it is, plated up. I did put, as you can see there, I, I put a tiny bit of like dried chives on top, just for garnish for the pitcher. <laughs> it's like a little fancier. But uh, this was so good. And if you're looking at like everything in it but the kitchen sink, it was so delicious. All right, guys, those are our recipes for this week. And that's what we ate all week to stay in ketosis. Um, do me a favor and comment down below any favorite recipes you have. I'm always looking for new ideas, new keto blogs, new, you know, resources. Because most of the recipes that we cook on here are just curated recipes from other sources. Of course, there's always at least one that I just kind of throw together that's out of my own head. But mostly, we like to take other people's expert opinions and advice on this and just test them out. So, if you liked this video and you like what we're doing here, give it a thumbs up because it makes me oh so happy. Leave those comments like I asked for. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. And of course, we'll see you next Sunday with another Keto What's for Dinner. Bye, guys. Not just kidding.